Yeah, it's 10 o'clock Mountain Time. It's Tuesday, February 23rd, 2021. That means it's time for Tom and Shane, uh, Business and Politics. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thanks for uh, showing up this morning. We're happy to have you along with us. Uh, our topic today, we're going to talk about customer service. It has nothing to do with the customer. Customer service has nothing to do with the customer but before we get to that, of course, uh, we've got to let you know that if you're watching us on YouTube, of course, you got to subscribe and click the notification bell, and you'll be notified whenever we have another podcast, and we're here every Tuesday and Thursday, of course, and like us, uh, help us grow our channel. We would appreciate that very much, and also, we're on Patreon. Uh, the link will be in the description below. If you'd like to become a supporter of our show, you can do that for as little as $3 a month. And for that $3, you will get A, nothing if you don't want it, and B, <laughs> in name recognition, uh, your personal name, your business name, or your website, uh, whatever you would prefer. We would put that up every time uh, we go on uh, live. And we'll be happy to do that for you. Uh, if you go for higher, five or 15 a month, uh, there's all kinds of perks, personal attention from us, personal contact with us uh, for your business help and uh, whatever. So we hope that you know, some of you will uh, take advantage of that as well. So quite a uh, quite a lot of perks over there. So uh, check out the uh, Patreon uh, in the description below. And of course, uh, you know, if you're, uh, um, <laughs> uh, we're here every Tuesday and Thursday, as I mentioned, um, we'll take on a business topic every day to help you or small business or your home-based business or your startup get going. And uh, for more tips and uh, tricks about uh, business, uh, go to our website, tomandshane.com. Tomandshane.com is where you want to be. And our uh, our business and political show on radio, that's every Saturday, 8 to 11 Mountain Time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, you can click this, listen now at KMMSAM.com, and you can share that with your friends. And, of course, you don't have to wait till Saturday. You can listen to past shows there on KMMSAM.com as well. Click on Tom and Change podcast, and please share that with your friends. So this morning, obviously... Customer service is our topic. Uh, what do you think, Shane? Customer service. big. Uh, you were in the restaurant business for years. Nothing more customer service than the restaurant business. Well, it's personal. You know, eating is personal. It's like sleeping. So, yeah, of course it is. The, the great thing about customer service is the value it you, you, and the opportunity it creates for you to network, especially with people. And uh, give them pause and cause to remember you and want to come back and, and return uh, to your place of business and uh, enjoy themselves once again. Yeah. Well, this topic today, uh, customer service has nothing to do with the customer. Um, this has been a very popular seminar that I do around the country. And uh, they have, uh, uh, it's probably the most popular seminar I have because uh, it sort of uh destroys the uh you know the image and i don't know about you shane i've i've been to probably dozens if not more customer service seminars from some people and uh, the message we always get at these seminars is exceed the customer's expectations and the customer is always right and i would say both of those are entirely wrong if you're approaching customer service from that perspective, uh, you're in trouble. Because if you exceed the customer's expectation today, how are you going to do it tomorrow or the next day or next week or next month? You know, it's like it's like moving the goalposts in a football game. <laughs> you're you're never going to be able to you're never going to be able to uh, exceed. And how do you know what the customer's expectation is to begin with? Anyway, so that's, yeah, I mean, there's, um, in uh, my seminars, I was talking about the airplane um, or the airlines, you know, used to be uh, airlines, you didn't have to go through, uh, you know, metal detectors and all the stuff you've got to go through now. Uh, is that good customer service that we have to 
take our shoes off and our belt off and our computers and everything. And then when we get in the airplane, all we get is a free soft drink and a, and a stale cookies. I mean, is, is that it? You got to pay for a blanket. You got to pay for a pillow, all the uh, perks that we used to get free. So what, what has happened with the airline industry is that they let us know they were going to make these changes. They let us know we were going to walk through body scanners. They let us know that we were going to uh, be subjected to almost a full body search before we get on the airplane. So we were prepared going in uh, for, for that, Shane. And in many cases, your restaurant business does the same thing. You might post a menu outside. So before people come in, they can see the prices and what you're going to get and what kind of the, um, you know, what kind of uh, uh, cuisine you have. Well, I, t I totally disagree with you. Uh, first of all, the TSA is responsible for having to search and, and cover everyone. Since well, I understand why. Yeah. May I finish? Sure. Um, the, you know, the U.S. government is responsible for the security of Americans, and they set up the TSA to protect people, particularly on airlines, as a result of 9-11. Um, in 2019, 4.1 billion passengers were carried on 41.9 million commercial scheduled flights. That's an average of 98 passengers or planes, 7.75 trillion passenger kilometers. An average trip uh, was uh, 40, uh, excuse me, uh, 3,800 miles, uh, $704 billion of revenue and employed 10 million workers, supported 65.5 million jobs and uh, 2.7 trillion economic activity totally, representing 3.6% of the global GDP. Uh, that's a lot. Those numbers are big. That's why the game was played so significantly. And that's why customer service, uh, service is so important to them because of the average uh, uh, now plane is 95 to 100% full. And what they learned about customer service was to reduce specific expectations, to reduce the cost so that by filling the planes fuller, more people could fly. Uh, which resulted in massive growth in the uh, hotel industry around the world and get, and gave people an opportunity to, to, to travel. Uh, customer service gave people an opportunity that never traveled to do it for the first time. Some people living in major cities in the U.S. have never even left the neighborhood. So I, I, don't, I don't think that's a fair comparison uh, to, the, to the industry, let alone with all the new developments and technology that have been created and the costs associated, which is primarily fuel, it's been reduced so significantly, particularly in the uh, last uh, four to eight years uh, with the oil industry spiking the way it did. Uh, the important thing about it is, is that um, are they consistent? Are they consistent with the service they provide? So it may, it may not be customer service, but it is service. So whether you pay $35,000 to have a bed and a first class seat with all the food that you, and liquor you want to drink, or you're squeezed back in the back with your two children and flying to Mexico for you know a, an hour or two hour flight, it, it's still service and the most uh, safest way to travel in the world. That's pretty good service. All right. Uh, from uh, Russ, uh, Russ thinks uh, Shane's right here. The airlines are not the reason for TSA screening. Uh, they, uh, the pilots and the crew don't like it either going through screening. And I would, I would agree with that. Um, I think we're missing the point here of what I'm, what I'm saying is oh, that. Oh, okay. Well, clarification. Yeah. Then. Yeah. <laughs> if you read what I sent you, uh, what we're. Uh, that's why I got the information I got because of what I read. Okay. But what happened was that, yes, the, these customer service were, was imposed on them by the government, right? Well, it's not, cut, you, not customer service. Those are requirements. No, 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 don't hang on. Okay. The, the procedure of getting on an airplane was, um, was uh, put in place and rules were established to get the customer from the street to the airplane, right? 
TSA said you got to screen them, you got to go through the luggage, you got to do all this stuff. To do with, yeah, what's, that got, what's that got to do with customer service? Uh, has a lot to do with customer service. Has oh. a ton to do with customer service, and that's that's the whole point of what we're talking about. Because customer service has nothing to do with the customer. It has nothing to do it, with customers. It hasn't seemed to have affected the airline industry. I mean, it's grown uh, at a 10 to 15% rate since mm -hmm. 9-11. So my, yeah. I, I don't, you know, maybe, maybe a different example yeah. might work. Try a different example. Okay. You're still missing the point. No, All right. Not. Russ says uh, different levels of service for different customers. Remember, People's Express, low cost, low service uh, airline. Um, then you have... Um, uh, emeritus business class and we had Southwest Airlines and all of those. The point I'm trying to make is that when you deliver customer service to a customer, so when that customer arrives at the street to get on an airplane, they've been prepared by news media and advertising by the airlines as to the kind of service they're going to get. They're going to get screened. You're going to take your shoes off. You're going to take your belt off. You're going to put your computer in a, in a uh, thing. And then you're going to be able to get on the airplane. You got to have an ID. You got to have all this stuff. That's the, the, the airline prepared us with their advertising and everything else, the service to expect. Imagine if you had showed up at the airport and you had no idea what was going to happen to you. Well, that's why they did such a good marketing job. And that's why exactly. they exactly that's and, my and that, point that they did a great marketing job and they, you know, uh, adjusted the services they provide to the customer uh, because of uh, the difficulties that they were faced with having to overcome to make sure their industry thrived and grew. So they adapted. Exactly. 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 That's what I'm saying. You, you, you don't have to confirm what I'm saying, but thank you anyway. Well, no. <laughs> I'm just confirming that maybe you might finally get it. <laughs> That's all. I got but the it. point. The point I was making with the airlines. Okay. Well, so what exactly, yeah, what exactly is customer service? So um, in uh, another a way that I uh, express this in my uh, seminars is that there's two extremes of customer service. One is customer service so bad, it would drive you out of business. So bad. I mean, you walk into a business and it's, it's a nightmare. And you're never going there again, ever. And maybe you don't even buy anything there. So that's one extreme. The other extreme is customer service so good that you can't be profitable giving it. Air, uh, limo rides to your store, uh, airline tickets for out-of-town shoppers. Great customer service, but not feasibly possible. So we've got a we've got a a balancing act between the extreme on both ends, right? So well, I disagree again. Um, you know, a company <laughs> can have a, a, a website uh, that has a store or an operation that's physical. And, uh, with, you know, with uh, 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 city uh, transport for, for people, um, they can provide on their website the uh, bus times or the trolley times or the subway times um, to and, and certainly, you know, how and show how to get there. Google Map is a huge benefit to to people that uh, want to develop and, and search for, for, for companies. So the, again, you know, customer and service are, is um, evolved. It's, it's, not, it's, not, th it's not the same, it's just evolved. What do those things you just mentioned cost the customer or cost the company? Nothing, nothing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Got, yeah they, they have yeah, their it website. Cost anything. Yeah, a limo yeah, ride but, would cost something. Well, yeah, but no one's going to do that. I mean, that's <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's my point. There's extremes. I make, I make they're called extremes because they're extreme. You're, 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 I know, but you're you're trying to define your point by using extremes that nobody's going to use. So that, I understand. Really that's the point. That's the okay. point. The point of the extremes is that 
and I'll give you my definition of customer service, which fits exactly in those extremes, all right? It's the best service you can deliver day in and day out and still be profitable. Best service you can deliver day in and day oh, yeah, out and still be profitable. I, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would disagree with that. Uh, customer, uh, customer service to me today in the 21st century um, is earmarked by huge success by a number of industries. And that's being consistent. Um, you know, whether you're, they're stores or fast food like McDonald's and Starbucks. Uh, one, one of the reasons customer service is so remarkable at those companies and has been so successful is because of the customer service they provide and not only providing you the food or drink, it's consistent. You, you the uh, uh, McDonald's burger and fries, it tastes the same, whether it's in Moscow, uh, Bangkok, or San Francisco. And whether you get a Starbucks coffee in Seattle or Tokyo or London, it's the same. It's consistent. So, you know, that's the relevant 21st century customer service is being consistent. And it this didn't happen overnight. It, it, it has taken 30 years of uh, the food industry and and a lot of other examples that you can could, you can look at. I mean, you know, there's, uh, you know, Nordstrom's is a perfect example. Uh, the success of Nordstrom, it was customer service. What was the customer service? You bought there, you could take back and they'd replace it. Didn't matter if it was six months old, a week old, 10 years. Didn't matter if it was broken or torn. You could take it into Nordstrom's and they'd replace it. So, you know, creating a, a level of service that you provide to your customer or are willing to provide to your customer, and that's extreme. For Nordstrom's to replace anything you bought there, even if it's 10 years. And it's still, unfortunately, because of COVID, it's not in good shape, but it is still out there. And we have... Uh, we have one here in, in Vancouver, uh, and I, uh, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but there are salespeople in every department, and in in some cases too, and they do rotate their their uh, uh, staff, uh, and they've trained them. So if uh, there's people walking the floor constantly around three areas, so if they see somebody is being helping someone, then they move in to help anyone else. So it very run, well run store, very well run. Um, a place uh, with a huge success because of customer service. And I mentioned that in my uh, thing that I sent you, and I talk about Nordstrom's in our in my seminars. And let's let's back up, and let's compare McDonald's and Nordstrom's. Let's compare those two, shall we? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Can I get a steak at McDonald's? Why not? Wouldn't that be good customer service? No, because it's not what they do. It's not what they do. Right? It's not what they do. What's that got to do with customer service? <laughs> you go, you, you go, you go to uh, well, McDonald's if you'll, finish, if you'll let me finish, I'll be happy to tell no, you no, what it has to do. That's a bad example. Uh, if no, you go isn't. to Asia and you, you, if you go to Asia and you go to McDonald's, they serve rice. Uh, and you know, as uh, they serve rice. shrimp in some place else and they serve squid someplace else. Well, but not, the point not, is... Not a, <laughs> the point you're missing is that a McDonald's developed consistent customer service. They can deliver day in and day out and still be profitable. They taught you how to use their restaurant. There's no tablecloths. There's no uh, uh, gold silverware. There's no glassware. You know, when you go in, they told you what to expect. You walk up to the burger or uh, the counter, you order, and you pay for your meal before you get it. What restaurant what, what restaurant do you do that in? Four Seasons? All, yeah, all, yeah all table that, for all four. Well, it's, that's just condition. <laughs> what do you think just, I'm talking about? Uh, customer service. Well, I'm talking about consistent customer service that is – is specific to that business. It's specific. To yeah, but business. if you're if you're if you're out wanting to get lunch or you are out wanting to get some food fast, the 
just because by paying first, that doesn't um, have anything to do know, with it. It, it, it to pick it up and leave. It's, it's, uh, your time in and out of McDonald's is less than five minutes. Um, if, so if you made your order, you went and you went to pick it up and then pay, pay well, you'd add more time. And it's all time management. The 21st century is all about time in it management for the customer. Why? So why you want to do about, everything you can about, to do. Why, why is it about that, though? It's profit. Because that's what it's people, profit. That's how people live in the 21st no, it's it, that's established. Before you walk in the door, McDonald's knows exactly what kind of profit they want to upsell you from an average of six fifty a person to maybe seven or eight dollars if they can, which they provide and, as a customer service. Any, other product, any, like any pies business or wants don't. to do that. But any business of course, wants they want, to do that. That's right. They want to upserve, uh, upsell you. Yeah, they, they and sure. they make it at the register where you pay before you pick your food up. To mm -hmm. save you time. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. It hasn't doesn't have anything to do with saving you time. Uh it's, let's it's see. Had anything um, to do with it. The whole, yeah. the whole that's okay. that's their whole model. That's their model. Time. Their model's profit. Uh Russ says no, uh, the idea the of the customer is <laughs> the idea of the customer is always right is a fail philosophy. If you give it to the customer all the time, and including the Karens, you defranchise the good customers who are reasonable. There are some demanding customers who ruin it for others. And uh, Russ is also, I agree, customer service is not about the customer, and it isn't. I'm trying to, trying to explain that to everybody. Uh, Amazon customer service is also whoa, whoa, whoa. reasonable. I know that one so fast. That's a major training factor, um, especially in personal uh, sales. Uh, like for food, and you, you know, you always refer to me with regards to my experience in the restaurant business. But in any business that I've found that I've trained, the customer, it's it's an approach to take in training staff to have a state of mind. A state of mind is so important to every salesperson that you have that works for you. And so taking the attitude going in that the customer's right, the customer is right about the questions they ask, you should always ask them what they need. You should always ask them why they called. What are they looking for? And, and so, yes, the customers are in the context you're using it, but in the context of your staff and making it easier for them to sell. So, you know, it depends on how you look at um, the customer, not, not how you deal with the customer being right. Okay. Uh, Amazon customer service is awesome. Reason for success, uh, that, uh, uh, that and prime delivery, uh, I'm a prime, uh, Amazon uh, person. Uh, I bought something, uh, by mistake at Amazon, uh, went to return it. They said, uh, we'll refund you just keep the item, uh, or uh, donate it. And, um, that's fine. They have an agreement with their supplier as to uh, what they'll re uh, take back and what they won't. And that's, that's fine. But again, it all comes no, down. No, but that's not the point. That's not their model. You're missing their model. Uh, the model here is taken actually from Nordstrom. Um, even the, the great one from Facebook will tell you this. Uh, and, and Amazon will, you know, Bezos will tell you this. He, he got this from, from Nordstrom. Uh, the, the cost is what's involved here. It, it's time and cost. So it, it's not worth the time or the cost of any item. Um, it, it's simpler to replace it and send it to them and suggest they give it away or re-gift it to someone else. So it, it, this is a matter of time, it's a matter of cost, and it's a matter of profit. So there's a that's far greater profit in that. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's good. It's, it's a good, it's a good uh, customer service angle um but the, to get the response sometimes from from a lot of people will tell you that a lot of people don't like dealing with amazon they they, they don't find that they get a a, a quality uh treatment when when they're dealt with it at, at amazon but and then other people like people that buy all the time on it uh they're quite happy with it because they've adjusted like you say amazon's trained them Amazon's trained them what to expect. So, you know, this uh -huh. is all again about training and marketing cost. And that's what we're talking about. 
and none of those things, the training, all of the things have nothing to do with the customer. They have to do with the company being profitable and delivering consistent service day in and day out wow. based on the model. Yo, of yeah, you, the you, real, you really have a, you have a real bad, you have a bad outlook about the consumer and, and the fact that if there aren't customers to consume, there's no, there's no marketplace. So <laughs> <laughs> if this is the way you talk to yeah. people in your, in your, no, going going around the country, like the, yeah. wow, that's pretty. That's and, pretty and hard. And that's and what you're uh, what you're giving me is the reaction that I usually get too. Uh, Good until until we come down I, to the I, bottom I'm line. Enjoying, of, I'm enjoying playing the devil's advocate. I understand that. Yeah, uh, Nordstrom's. Uh, someone tried to return a uh, set of tires to Nordstrom's, and they took it back, uh, even though they don't sell tires. So that made national news. So that was one of the things that instilled Nordstrom. When you think about customer service, that's one of the stories you think about. If you're in Bozeman, Montana, you think of Ace Hardware. Because that's the, that's what they've, that's the customer service that they have instilled in the customer here. When you walk into an Ace Hardware, the person at the yeah, checkout asks you what you're what you're looking for, and she will tell you or he will tell you what aisle it's on, and someone will meet you there. They'll call somebody to come over and meet you at that thing so they can tell you the difference in garden hoses or the difference in uh, in um, you know chainsaws or things like that. You don't get that at Home Depot. That's how Ace Hardware competes with. Um, places like that but one of the things that ace does they let you know that's the kind of service you're going to get and it might cost a little more to do that at ace hardware than it will at home depot so we have the new customer service and the new customer service simply says that if you're if you have a business if you leave it up to the customer to define the the service they're going to get coming in your door your your chances of having an unhappy customer are multiplied quite highly if you prepare the customer for what they're going to get in your advertising and your marketing messages you're going to have a much happier customer walking in that door because they are then going to see what they are going to, they receive what they were told they were going to expect. And that's what customer service is. It's preparing the customer for the most consistent service you can deliver day in and day out and still be profitable. That's the new customer service. It's not letting the customer define what they well, think I, they should get. I, I disagree it's, with you. About, I disagree completely about that with you. Um, you know, you're talking about uh, um, major industries that are in a position to do that, that have the marketing. I'm power talking to about do that. mom and pop on Main Street. No, you're not. No, you're not. Yeah, if your customer defines, excuse me, if your customer defines the level of service they are expecting, and you don't deliver, which is a quote for. Customer. Uh, but the, the difficulty there is that a customer may have a certain expectation coming to your store because you may be you may have a store similar to another one. There are different dollar stores, so you know you go into one or the other. The price different; they may vary. The products don't differ that much. But you, your store is special, and you want to be able to buy the specific service or product to them. You're not in a position to create an expectation before they come in. If you're a new company, that comes with growth. We discussed that uh, at in regards to not time. I'd say it's a very small uh, portion time uh, that people come in unknowing, never heard of your shop, maybe walked in and you know, looking through the window, they create an expectation. Oh, gee, it looks, nah, that's sort of like Henry's down the street. Oh, I'll go in and check it out. So, yeah, you're, you're at a disadvantage and, you know, good training, um, being polite, being uh, interested in the customer and wanting 
the customer to be satisfied personally with personal interest uh, will be successful. Uh, it's It always comes back to the same as we say uh, on our Saturday show, po politics are all local. Well, sales are all personal. So that's the dynamic. Mm -hmm. Look at them in the eye, get to know them and uh, overwhelm them and their expectations and, and move on and close the deal, make the sale. Yep. Well, we just opened Winco Foods so and I was looking up on, um, I was looking up on YouTube how to check out at Winco Foods because they have a specific way for you to check out at Winco Foods. I don't know if you were aware of that or not, but they do. So I, you know, I've never been to a yeah, Foods. Yeah, yeah I haven't either. I, I haven't either. Um, but how did but we I have learn all the that? same store here? We has it. Uh, Walmart has it. it. Uh, they yeah. all have. Yeah, it's conditioning. Yeah. Well, that's why that's all I'm talking about is that if you condition the customer to use your place of business, you're going to have a happier customer than if they, uh, you know, if you don't provide them with the uh, information about what's going to happen to them in your place of business, whether it's a small business, whether it's a chain store, yeah, it doesn't matter. That, you're, you're talking about big box stores. This show, this show is not about big box stores or airlines. It's about I know, a personal I'm, business I'm just saying, it's either that or. you, your family, operate. And, and it, you don't have people check out their own things. You want to make that personal contact. Again, we've mm -hmm. our marketing shows. Uh, you want to uh, uh, up, up info. You want to in the twenty first age in twenty first century. You want to up info, <laughs> not just upsell. You want to get their email address or maybe their phone number, and sure. you know you want to try and create a personal relationship. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know what you're you're, you're suggesting to a big box store and and uh, appropriately so, but they're adapting because of the necessity of the cost of labor, and the it, they're trying to create a new mo model. Just like exactly. Walmart, you know, 20 years ago went into the food business. Now they're the largest, you know, seller of food in the world because they adapted. And, you know, they took out several competitors that were big box operations. Whole Foods That's was true. wiped out by yeah. Walmart, you know. And, uh, and the only reason Safeway, Albertsons, and and others have, uh, you know, uh, survived, including chains in the southeast part of the United States, Win Dixie and stuff is because they've adapted. They've adapted to new technology and new training of their staff to help people in the specific area of checking out. But mm -hmm. go into any of those stores today and find a, a person in the store that knows where something is. It's it's crazy. They they should have a, a you know you go into a mall and they've got a map in the mall that you can go up to to see where all the stores are. I mean, all these big box stores should have a map at the front for people to, or, or even a, 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 yeah. you know, where do I find duct tape? You know, and <laughs> it, you have this person at Walmart and you walk in, you go, I'd like some duct tape. And then they point to the corner and they go, oh, over there in, in the hardware department. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You know what aisle it is? No. You know, yeah. So there you go. Well, they can't uh they can't post, at least in not in our Amazon, they can't they can't post a map because they change the store every three weeks or so. <laughs> and what used to be here is now on the other side of the store. So you know they, they don't do no, that. That's just but, bad management. Well, it is. That, that's and bad I, management. I, and I agree. Moving product around a, moving product around a, a big box store is bad management because they're consistent yeah. about what they buy. They always buy the same things, moving it mm -hmm. to somewhere else for them to, to look for it. That's going to generate more sales, which would be the reason they probably do it. Well, it is bad yeah. management. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty smart folks. So, but, uh, but anyway, uh, to finish up, <laughs> uh, what we want in all cases is a happy customer. Mm-hmm. And the more informed the customer is walking through your door, the more chances of them being uh, leaving a happy customer are enhanced uh, dramatically. So our only message here is to let the customer know what you're going to do for them in your marketing and your advertising and let them know what to expect when they walk through that door. So there's no you know, big surprises. You know, that I, I, 
I don't want I don't walk into McDonald's thinking it's a steakhouse because McDonald's has made sure I know it's not a steakhouse because they advertise what it is all day, every day on every channel on uh, TV. So that's all I'm saying is that if you can inform the customer of what to expect in your business, you're going to do much better than otherwise. So, see when I stop, you start. No, I am. I, I'm happy about having a happy customer. Uh, no. I've dealt with people all my life. Yeah, <laughs> I understand that. That's why you're here. <laughs> whether, I'm on, whether I'm on the phone. Mm -hmm. thing I'm dealing with and wanting them to be happy and accept, accepting the fact that they're right. Doesn't bother me at all. All right. There we are. They know. All what right. I, the customer knows what they want. <laughs> oh, really? They know what they want. You, you really believe that? Well, they, wouldn't be your, they wouldn't be in your store. Otherwise, why would they be in your store? Unless they're just, Window shopping, you know, people there. I mean, you know, there they're, are people they're that in just your store shopping. because you advertised and uh, told them uh, what they were going to get in your store and how you were going to get it. That's the main reason they're there. Not Unless necessarily a small shopping. business. Yeah. It, a small business hasn't the ne necessary, hasn't the money or means to, to market for that. You know, they, they have to establish other things to bring people in. And we've discussed that. Okay. All right. But I still think preparing the customer is a secret to good customer service. If you prepare them for what you're going to deliver and you deliver it, you got a happy customer. It's that simple. For a major corporation, you're absolutely right. And for a mom and pop on the street, Snay Shoes, Ace Hardware, uh, Granny's Donuts, uh, you name it. <laughs> It's there. Granny's Donuts, hey. cash only. No credit cards, no checks. But you know that going in because they've told everybody in their marketing and advertising, that's the deal. All right. Uh, hey, if you're watching us on YouTube, by all means, hey, don't forget, uh, you you really, 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 really need to subscribe, like us, and click that notification bell because you never want to miss another one of our uh, podcasts about any topic we have, and we'll help you with uh, your customer service, which we love to do, or any other topic for that matter. And also, we're on Patreon. Uh, we'll be happy to help you personally. And uh, go to our uh, Patreon uh, site. Uh, it's in the description below. And uh, check it out. See what uh, perks uh, Shane and I can provide for you. And uh, I think you'll be very pleased with what you see over there, hopefully. And uh, so uh, uh, also, uh, don't forget, uh, you can listen to any of our past shows. They're all at KMMSAM.com. Click on Tom and Shane's podcast. and. Um, uh, of course, uh, we're on radio with our business political show every Saturday, 8 to 11, Mountain Time. Click KMMSAM.com. You can listen to us live. Call us. You don't have to uh, sign up for anything. You don't have to leave any personal information of any kind. All you do is listen, call, and interact with us. We'll be happy to uh, do that with you. And uh, thanks for watching and listening. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, say goodbye, Shane. I will indeed be happy, be safe. We very much appreciate you enjoying our show. It's uh, very important that you uh, find a place where you can go and uh, save yourself a lot of time and money to be more successful. So live in the moment, forever moments especially. They don't come very often. And, uh, you know, live to work. Come home happy from your work. Your family wants to see you. All right. Uh, Linda says, I believe great customer service is polite, friendly, and helpful uh, experience. And uh, 
uh, asking you what you want and uh, being honest if they if you don't have it, um, something uh, you uh, uh, you uh, do to other uh, other stores. So, yeah, I like it. So absolutely right. So. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us. Uh, coming up on Thursday, uh, Mike McCormick will join us, and uh, we're going to be talking about Bitcoins. We're going to be talking about the different types of advertising. So if you're a business owner and uh, or um, uh, investing, I'm sorry, <laughs> different kinds of investing. If you're a private investor or if you're a business owner and uh, want to know what to do with the profits that maybe can generate a little more income for you, uh, we'll be talking with uh, Mike McCormick about that on this coming Thursday show. So. Until then, uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks, Shane. Thanks uh, to all our listeners. Thanks for the comments. Thanks for uh, supporting the show. And uh, we really appreciate you guys. And we'll see you on Thursday.